Hi everybody, welcome to Using Your Graphing Calculator in Math 140. I'm Fred Felden, thanks for watching. In this video, we'll use the graphing calculator to find the zeros of a function. The term zero means the input value that, when substituted into the function, gives you the output zero. Other names for this value are root, solution, and x-intercept. They all mean the same thing. The graphing calculator really helps visualize this nicely. Here's the steps and I'll walk you through them. Display the graph. Make sure you can see the zero in the viewing window. Go to the calculate menu and choose number two, zero, and then define a left bound right bound that contains the zero inside it. Okay, let's open up the graphing calculator starting from the home screen you can see the blinking cursor in the upper left hand corner hit F1 the Y equals button and enter the equation I put it in earlier there it is notice the equation starts with the small leading negative sign so be careful about that to display a graph as I've mentioned I usually start with the standard viewing window so hit F3 zoom and choose number 6 Hmm, I get what appears to be a straight line. But think about this for a minute. Look back at the equation. It's a quadratic, right? A second degree equation, the graph of which must be a parabola. And the leading coefficient, the number in front of the x squared term, is negative, so the parabola opens downward. All right, back to the graph. And you need to ask yourself, hmm, where's the vertex? Where's the highest point? And, and I see only one intercept, one x-intercept. Is, is there another? And if so, where is it? So you can see how tricky it is sometimes to find the right viewing window. Well, in our situation, one thing we can do is use the zoom in and zoom out command. I'll hit F3, zoom, and I'll choose number 3 to zoom out. They're asking for a center target, and the origin zero zero is okay so let's go with that hit enter there we go now I can see more of the parabola and by trial and error you can clean up the window get rid of all the squished together tick marks go up a little higher so you can see the vertex and etc you may have to sometimes use the zoom in or zoom out feature more than once alright another way to find an appropriate viewing window is to use the table feature and I'd like to introduce that to you in this video. Let's go back to the standard viewing window just kinda to replay where we were. You can see that's not a good viewing window for our parabola and what we'll do is set up a table. To do that see the table set command above function key number two so hit second F2 table set and let's start as I said with an X coordinate of negative two then hit the down arrow the increment table means the next row how much do you want to add to get to the next rows and one is okay and then we'll do everything is automatically so that looks good what I want to do now is view the table and see the table command above function key 5 so hit second F5 and that should be our table pretty cool huh this is a feature of the calculator that I use a lot so you can see when x is negative 2 what y is I'll hit the down arrow and there's other various rows in the table okay now what we're looking for is a maximum number in the y1 column that'll be where the vertex is let's keep going just keep hitting the down arrow Ooh, the numbers are getting bigger and bigger and bigger I'm getting close looks like I found it there around x equals 15 or so is where the vertex is so on the y max column you want to go up to 50 around okay so there's the high point let's keep going because remember I'm looking for the other x-intercept the parabola is going down now the y values are decreasing I'm looking for when it gets past zero and there it is so I think I'm gonna go to around x equals 30 or 40 
with a y minimum of about negative 30. So hopefully you can see how using the table feature helps you set up a good viewing window. So let's do that now. I'll hit F2, viewing window, and like I said, I'll go to, oh, maybe I'll start with negative 10 and go to 40, like I said, on the x-axis. With a tick mark, let's see, that'd be 50 tick marks. I don't want that. 10 tick marks is what I usually try to get. That looks the best. As I said earlier, the y min will be negative 30. I'll go up to 50 on the y-axis. And uh, I'll make a tick mark every 10 units. But setting your right viewing window is a guess and check trial and error process. Let's see how this looks. Beautiful. There's not much wasted space. I can see the maximum point up there, the vertex, and I can see both intercepts. So that's exactly the type of viewing window you're looking for for a graph. All right, let's go ahead and find the x-intercepts now. I'll go to the Calculate menu, so hit 2nd, F4, Calculate, and I'll choose number 2. I want to find the zeros. Now we have to guide the calculator to the zeros because there's often more than one, and it can only find one at a time. The calculator is asking you to position the cursor to the left of the zero. So I'm going to use the left and right arrow keys. There's no set amount, but I just want to get the intercept, uh, excuse me, I just want to get the cursor slightly to the left of the zero and hit enter. And can you see the little triangle? That's the left boundary. Now it's asking for a right boundary. So hit the right arrow until you get a little past the zero again. Oops, sorry. That's way too far. That's good. And hit enter. Now it's asking you to place the curve, the cursor on the curve somewhere near the point of intersection. It doesn't have to be on it, just somewhere between the left boundary and right boundary and somewhere near the zero. And hit enter and we should get our first zero now. Ta-da! There it is. When x is equal to about 1.88 now we have to repeat the process. Go to the Calculate menu, choose number 2. I'll use the right arrow key to position the cursor to the left of this other zero that I'm trying to find. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Yeah, that looks good. And hit Enter. Now find the right boundary and hit Enter and take a guess and hit enter and there it is. We could have found these values by hand using paper and pencil. Let's take a look. In this case the function is a quadratic degree 2. It's a parabola that opens downward and we can find the zeros or the solutions or the x-intercepts by u using the quadratic formula. It's not that easy. They don't come out nice and even but it can be done. Here's how you do it. Notice that we get the exact same answers as it should, as we should, by hand using paper and pencil. But sometimes you can find the zeros only one way or the other, so you should definitely know how to do it both ways. Okay? So that's it. Thanks for watching.